If you're looking for a way to make your life a little easier using Kubernetes or OpenShift to automatically provision your persistent volumes for you using NFS as a storage class, then you've come to the right place. Let's get to it. The only prerequisite for this video, apart from having a running OpenShift or Kubernetes cluster, is that you have an NFS server. Now, if you don't already have an NFS server, I've included the link to this GitHub repo in this video's description. So if you navigate to that and scroll down a little and click on configure environmental services, you can scroll down to step 18, which is where the instructions for installing an NFS server are. Now I've already done this when I installed OpenShift. So you can see here, this is what the environment looks like. You can see that the NFS server resides on this helper node here. So let's quickly get the NFS server side of the config out of the way so that we can focus on setting up Kubernetes with the storage class. So first up, we need to SSH to our helper node. We can have a quick look at our existing exports. We can see that we just have the one export at the moment that's for the OpenShift registry. We set that up when we installed OpenShift 4. So let's add a new share. We can start by making a directory for the share. I've just called it NFS SC for NFS storage class. I've opened up the permissions and then we can export the share. Now in terms of security, the root squash option is definitely preferred so that when new files are added to the server, they're added as an unprivileged user rather than root. Um, and that helps us prevent any sort of privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Um, but for these demos to try and keep the videos shorter and just generally have less to fiddle around with when it comes to file permissions, uh, I'm just gonna apply the no root squash option. Export that. Okay, and that's all we need to do for the NFS server side of things. Let's move on to the auto provisioner setup in OpenShift now. So for the auto provisioner, I'm gonna be using this GitHub repo here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. We can scroll down and see some basic instructions. We're gonna use the without Helm method. So we're basically going to create a new namespace. We can deploy some manifests um, that include a deployment, some RBAC config, uh, obviously a storage class as well. And then we can apply some security context constraints um, to the user that's running in the provisioner pod. Um, that's a that's an open shift thing. And then from there, we'll be able to automatically spin up our persistent volumes when we create a claim against that storage class. So first up, we can create the NFS namespace. Then if we come back to the GitHub repo, we can click on deploy. And you can see there's some manifests in here. So we can start with the deployment. Copy this. Obviously you could clone the repo as well if you wanted to. Now there's a couple of things we have to change in this file. So we want to change the namespace from default to NFS. And then we can just change some of these environment variables. So down here, the provisioner name, uh, we can give this a more meaningful name to us. I'll call it NFS storage. We know the NFS server is the IP address of that helper node which if you've been following along since the OpenShift install will be 192.168.22.1. And the path will be that new directory that we just created. And then finally, we just need to update that in the volumes config as well. We can save that. We can come back to the repo then and we can get the RBAC manifest. So in here, we just want to change the namespaces as well. And then we can save. And then we can get the storage class config. Now in here, like the note says, we just need to update the provisioner name because we changed it to NFS storage which is what we called it in the environment variable in the deployment config. And then it's up to you what you set for the archive on delete option. If you set this to true, when a persistent volume is deleted, it will remain on the NFS server and it will just have uh, archived prepended to the name. So I'm just going to leave it as false so that everything's cleaned up when we remove a persistent volume, but that's up to you how you wanna deal with that. Now we can apply those configs.
And let's take a quick look at the status in the dashboard. So if we have a look at the deployment, we can see that it's trying to scale to one at the moment. If we scroll down, we can see that it has currently failed to create. And that's because the NFS volumes are not allowed to be used. So like I mentioned before, if you're using OpenShift, there's an additional step that we have to do. We have to assign the appropriate security context constraint to the service account that's running in the NFS provisioner pod. Now, in terms of what SCC to add to the service account user, we can see there's a number of different options, but the one that we need is the host mount any UID. And we can see here, this is used to grant pods access to the host file system. So we can add that SCC directly to the service account user, or we can create a role and then apply that role to the service account user. So I think the, the latter is usually preferred, so we'll go with that option. So first we can create the role. So there you can see the role is created and then we can map that role to the user. In terms of finding the correct user, we can take a quick look back at the dashboard. We can have a look at the YAML. And we can see here under spec template and then the actual pod spec, we can see that the service account name is this NFS client provisioner. Okay, so that role has now been added to that user. We can make that take effect now by scaling the deployment. Okay, cool. And now we can see that the provisioner pod has come up. We can see here under volumes, that we have this uh, NFS share that's now available. We can do a real quick test to make sure that things are working as expected. I created this manifest that uh, will create a PVC using the new storage class and then map that to a pod. So I'll copy the link to this gist in the description below as well. Just ignore these errors here. I'm not sure why that why my autocomplete isn't working at the moment, but you can see that those the, the PVC and also the pod has now been created. We can come back to the dashboard and we can have a look at our pods in the default namespace. You can see here we have this Ubuntu test pod. We can go to the terminal. The PVC was mounted to the NFS directory. So I'm just echoing the word test to a file called test. If we come back to our services machine, we can see that we now have this PVC directory. And we can see that we have the test file in there. Okay, cool. So that's all working. The last thing that we probably want to do is we want to set this storage class so that it's the default storage class. That way for any dynamically provisioned volumes, it will automatically use this NFS storage class. So what we can do is we can edit our storage class. And we just want to add an annotation. So that's storage class.kubernetes.io forward slash is default class, and we set that to true, and then we can save. And now when we look at our storage class again, you can see that we have default there in brackets. And that's it. We now have a default storage class that can be used to dynamically provision read write once, read only many, and read write many persistent volumes. In my upcoming video on OpenShift virtualization, we'll be putting this to use. I'll be showing you how to install Windows and run it on your OpenShift cluster. Now, if this sounds interesting to you, please hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon so that you can be notified when I release that video. Thanks again, and bye for now.